Hey babes, hello, hello, hello. So there's a few things I want to touch on today because I feel like nobody's talking about it. Um, and if they are, I didn't see it. But I want I want to speak on things that I'm seeing from my perspective. Um, so let's start with this video. God, that last night was like our third year, like anniversary of us, like knowing each other, or like me. Pause. So when she's she's talking about Ryan, Ryan called her on on like their anniversary of them like knowing each other or meeting each other, whatever it is, right? And at that part, she cracks her voice as if she's upset and crying about this because it hurts her, you know, because she's the victim. Um, but meanwhile, you were telling Ryan the whole relationship everything's fine the d is fire yeah i'm so happy this is the happiest i've ever been and then you throw him away instantly instantly for another guy but i told you that was gonna happen like months ago right it was in a reading i did and i said um she's gonna be just overwhelmed with the materialistic stuff and to that point right so for me, what she's about to say is all just, listen. In person and all that, I didn't remember that. So I, like, after that, I felt bad for answering, your, you know, answering him with, why are you calling me? Um you should feel bad. You should feel bad. And the reason you should feel bad is not, why are you calling me? It's why... When all that stuff about Steve happened, you started texting Ryan back. And now that Ryan's texting you back, it's a problem. And you're the victim again. Uh, so that made me feel like a piece of shit. Because you are. And that's how you should feel. Because that's who you are. You've done nothing good since you've been out of prison. Nothing. I try. I try to be sensitive to him. I really do. That's your husband right now. And you're trying to be sensitive when you broke your vows. But we all knew you were going to break them. He was just your meal ticket out of prison because he looked good on papers. I knew you were lying the moment you said the D was fire. <laughs> I don't know if y'all remember, I said, that ain't no D, that's a boom boom. The man's 400 pounds. We know the D ain't fire. We know you're lying. I knew you were going to leave him the moment I heard that. And I mean, I wish him nothing to the best. I heard... As she shakes her head, no. Then he went out on a date, I guess. Good for... As she shakes her head, no. Good for him as she shakes her head no. Him. I kept telling him for the longest time. Go, like, get late. Shut off. I... Awkward. Do what you need to do to mend your heart. I'm, I'm all for To mend your heart because you broke his heart because you played him like a little fiddle. That was your trick in prison. He'd put money on commissary, take care of all your, your stuff you needed taken care of on the outside. You used him, abused him, and threw him away. But you, you're used to doing that to people. And I'm totally fine with him doing lives. I just, there's some things that I feel like, if you're going to talk about your life, talk about your life, don't talk. And she's sitting here talking about him. <laughs> Not me. Talk about... You don't want people to talk about you, yet you're on the internet. What? Your hobbies. Talk about wrestling. Talk about what make. But you're talking about him. So why can't he talk about you? Alright, so I'm done with this video. Let's go to the next. Okay, so I want to talk about this video. Um, and before I speak about this video, I want to talk about another video. So... I want to remind you to please watch the playlist on YouTube because I show a part where she's on trial, on stand, or whatever she's doing, and she admits, okay, that at eight years old, or I'm sorry, 
before eight years old. The, the, when she went into the wheelchair, at that moment, she admits at that moment, she knew it was all a lie, a fraud, and a scam. Just like I said. Okay? And that was the first time I ever saw that video. And it was just a snippet of it. And it, she literally admits to knowing it had always been a scam for money, houses, and etc. She says this out her own mouth. I'm not saying this. I'm repeating what she says. Okay? Um, now, I want to talk about a video that I seen yesterday. It was on Nina's page, but I don't know which page because she has a few pages. Um, but Gypsy was, I guess, live, and she was, like, doing her hair. And I just want to say there is a reason for everything that Gypsy does. Okay? The way she's playing Ken and... and and Ryan against each other, she's looking for attention, right? She wants to feel like somebody's fighting over her and for her, right? Now, with this specific video, not this one that you're looking at, the one I'm speaking of that I saw on Nina's that I cannot find, um, she's curling her hair, talking about get ready with me, right? She puts this really dark tanning solution on, and then she's sitting there for like 10 minutes curling her hair, but it's not curling, and she mentions how she got it in 2000, I don't know, 16, 17, and she's always had this... this um, curling iron and she loves it and it don't even curl her hair like seriously and again gypsy rose does everything for a reason to get what she wants because she also said she gets whatever she wants okay um and this reason for doing this whole stupidness with this curling iron is just to get sponsorships duh why is nobody saw that nobody saw through that she just wants sponsorships. Now, you know, high-end curling iron people are going to reach out to her and give her some free shit. She wants to be an influencer. She is an influencer. But for the wrong side. She's not a beauty icon. There's nothing about her that screams, oh my god, I have to do it like Gypsy. Because if you ask me, she's copying everybody else's looks. So, with that being said, the whole reason of the, the non-working curling iron is she just wants sponsorships duh right so let's go over this video it a lot of the things oh i'm sorry she's gonna be speaking on her traumas and i have a video a few videos about this where i catch her in 100 percent lies okay so let's do this that come up that are triggers for me is tied to my trauma obviously but we've been able to like nail down what really is some of those causes um and the root of it so we know guys she's saying most of her trauma happened at 10 years old at 10 years old she was already full-fledged in on this scam 100 percent for years at this point there was never no signs of abuse ever if you try to say, oh, the, the eye surgeries and her, her glands and she needed all of those, do a little bit of research and you will see. She needed all of those. And that's why I really hope she is pregnant because her karma is going to come through her child. And what I mean by that is she has a 50-50 chance of her baby having the same chromosome deletion as she has, okay? And because of that, Nine times out of ten, the baby's going to have the same chromosome deletion, okay? And the baby's going to have to, unfortunately, go through the same procedures that Gypsy Rose had to go through. Because Gypsy Rose is in the eye of the media and public from going live and all that other crap. Um, we will see for a fact that Gypsy Rose needed all those surgeries through the baby. You understand? So, something she can't run from. People have different stages of their life that they grow from. So the way my therapist told me... Yeah, because she's definitely speaking as if she's speaking like the therapist. Um, is that, like, my trauma, like, my most damaging trauma happened when I was, like, 10, 9 or 10... And so that explains why. What trauma 
you didn't get the ride you wanted on Disney. You didn't get to meet your favorite Harry Potter character. Oh, wait, you did get all of that. So what trauma? There was no trauma. Dee Dee didn't abuse her, hit her. She didn't tie her up. If anything, Gypsy tied Dee Dee up. Because that story don't even make sense. And when she talks about the story two different times, I caught her laughing and smiling about it instead of getting triggered. Her face showed excitement. Okay. Personality. When I react to something, I don't respond. I react. So when I am reacting to a situation... See, crazy people don't know they're crazy. And for her to be able to explain this precisely... Mm -mm -mm. Nope. Nope. There is two, let's just say, ages. That's how she explained it to me. There's two ages that I am. And now she's just trying to still make you think like she's slow. Like she's the one with the autism. And that's why she was acting like that the whole time. And now she's a different age. And now I talk like a grown-up. Mm-hmm. Just overnight. Because when you have trauma, you are stunted. I that's not necessarily true. That's usually drugs. <laughs> okay. Um, I have been a victim since I was one years old. Are you trying to tell me I'm stunted at one years old? Nah, get out of here. The point in which the trauma happened. And so for me, it was 10. Look, she's thinking of a lie. Look, she don't know what the fuck she's about to say. You were not 10 with no trauma. There is no trauma in your eyes. The only trauma I see is your mother's face. The bloodied one. When I react to a situation that I am triggered by. Mm-hmm, like your mama telling you no. My 10-year-old self. Bull. Bullshit. Reverts back to that mentality. Of is this justification? Did the 10-year-old gypsy kill your mother? Get out of here. A 10-year-old. So some of the things that I say and do reflect someone much younger. <laughs> she really trying to play dumb. Mm -mm, I don't buy it. You're too calculated. Nope, nope, nope. Then my 32-year-old self. Um, Lies. Guys, do you buy this? Let me know in the comments right now. Do you buy what she's saying right now? Or do you see what I'm saying? With also that being said, some other traumas happened when I was 16. So. What? They told you no? They didn't want <clears throat> to. You? <laughs> when I am reacting to it. You're 16 years old, right? But you're locked in the house, right? So where's the trauma? If you can't go nowhere, where's the trauma? Because you were allowed to go places. Situation under stress where I feel controlled. Oh, she's talking about Mama Dukes. Um, that defensive snark. Mm-hmm. This is real. Look at her eyes. Look at her eyes. That snark. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's go back a little bit. Yes, where I feel controlled. Um, that defensive, snarky behavior that wants to clap back, that wants to defend myself, that wants... Uh-huh. You clap back on your mama. That's what you did. She told you something you didn't like, and you couldn't have it in your control, and you slaughtered her. Just say something sarcastic comes out at that time. So, you know, my therapist broke it down to where it's very enlightening of why in the show like why ryan and i would get into arguments why I again i feel like ryan has his own issues with wanting to be with a murderer in the first place but at the same time he was totally used totally used um like a john like a trick like like just totally freaking used and i don't think he was blinded to it i think he knew exactly what was going to happen um 
it might have even been in the freaking script, okay? Uh, because, well, I think it, it was it was 100% in Gypsy's script. But I'm talking about the actual show script, too. Like, are you going to get rid of him or what? <laughs> um, but I think he 100% knew that it was going to happen. Um, I just think he had, like, a glimmer of hope he was holding on to. Because this man literally knows everything that she's told him. Because everything... I've seen, and I haven't even watched it, but everything I've seen on, like, little clips on TikTok, he's answering before she's answering, which tells me he's memorized her letters and stuff like that. So she feeds him BS, he memorizes it, and now she has somebody to corroborate her lies. Okay. Would say some of the things that I said to him. And it's because I'm reverting back to that mentality of that. Let's just listen to that part again. To arguments, why I would say some of the things that I said to him. And it's because I'm reverting back to that mentality of that trauma. And She said him. Of what trauma? So... When I am reacting to a situation under stress where I feel controlled, um, that defensive snarky behavior that wants to clap back, that wants to defend myself, that wants to say something sarcastic comes out at that time. So, you know, my therapist broke it down to where it's very enlightening of why in the show like why ryan and i would get into arguments mm -hmm. why i would say some of the things that i said to him well you had to paint him in the bad light like you're telling your bedroom business to the entire world any man would be upset about that any man if you wanted to privately talk to your sister you would have privately talked to your sister but you didn't do that you made sure the cameras were rolling talk about this is real shit no this is real shit that you created it's not real life shit that's drama you created and you tried to capture him in the bad lighting so you could be justified as why you went to ken and it's because I'm reverting back to that. It has nothing about... It. She knew exact. She was very calculated. It wasn't something a 10-year-old would have done. It was very calculated. She knows what she's doing. She's been planning this for a very long time. ...of that trauma. And so there's there was times that... I told Ryan, like, you're acting like my mother, like, you control me, you're this, you're that, and... And nobody was controlling her. She didn't like that he was looking over at her while she's on the phone. Well, you were cheating. It's called intuition. You were cheating. 100%. Hello. Because I'm reverting back to that mentality of that trauma. Ken literally hovers over her and looks at the phone. She ain't got a problem with that. Because she's into him. She was never into Ryan. Two, two, two. She was never into him. And so there's there was times that... I told Ryan, like, you're acting like my mother, like, you control me, you're this, you're that, and yeah, I did call. See? Ryan some things and, and point out. The thing is, she's trying to make him look bad. Ken's doing the same things Ryan was doing, and it's okay for Ken and wasn't for Ryan. She's talking about he a hoarder. No, he's a big freaking guy. He eats a lot, obviously. And you came, he came home from work and you threw everything away. All his food he just bought. You know how expensive food is, Gypsy? No, you don't buy it. He had his whole fridge stocked for, for meals. And you threw all the meals away and the Tupperware. Some dumbass shit, I'd be mad too. And then you try to say, oh, he's a hoarder, like my mom. 
You mean like your mom and you. You trying to pretend you're somebody you're not. Throwing his shit away. To pretend you're not a hoarder. But we all know you're a hoarder. Those behavior Because I felt like those were triggering to me. So in the... So him getting mad because you cleaned out the fridge was a trigger. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, when I have... Seems like every time she don't like something about somebody, it's a trigger. That's not how triggers work. I grabbed my phone when we were arguing um, about me confiding in my sister about our sex life that wasn't... No, you confided in front of the cameras. If you were truly just trying to confide, you would have pulled her to the side with no camera and spoke to her. But you didn't. You wanted the attention of it. You created the whirlwind. And you knew what you were doing. And then, after the whirlwind took off, you tried to record him to get his reaction, call his reaction a terrible reaction, and I think he took it well, because I would have hit you with all the damn <laughs> Tupperware bins. Boop, 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 right in your head. Like, what are you doing? You, you lucky. Lucky he didn't do that. Wait, the cameras are on, you know. Oh, and look, you're how you're acting. And he's standing there calm as ever. <laughs> Going so well at the time. Because um, you were already cheating. He got defensive. He started arguing. Which he had every right to. And his argument was valid. His argument was valid. You told the whole world when all you had to do was shut the camera off and talk to your people, your family, that you quote-unquote say was your family. That really isn't, because look how fast you threw everybody away, you know. Um, family means nothing to you. So you, you, you could have you avoided all that, but you knew what you were doing. You wanted that attention, and now you got it. And now, like you said, you feel like a piece of shit because you are. You really are. Me, so I grabbed my phone and started recording because I knew in my head I'm like I'd get more attention he acts one way behind closed doors they always have the camera they literally have a cameraman <laughs> and then another way when there's a camera on him so I'm going to grab this phone and I'm going to have this as proof that this is how he's he was doing absolutely nothing. He was standing there saying, yes, I'm mad. Yes, we can talk about it. You didn't want to talk about it. Behaving. So, I expressed that... Mm-hmm. There you go, Pinocchio. That time, I'm like, y you're telling me I can't talk to my sister about adult things that are our woman things that I want... I can't... I, can't, I don't really want to talk to Christy about it. I don't really want to talk... You talked to everybody about it. You didn't just talk to your sister. You know this. Shut up. My dad about it. So, I want to talk to my sister about it. So, I felt like confiding in my sister about those kinds of things was okay. And Playing victim? I thought it was okay. Yeah, you thought recording it was okay, too. That millions of people watched it when it could have been a private moment like you're explaining it to be when it wasn't you're she's talking as if this was a private moment bef between her and her sister it wasn't she intentionally recorded the whole conversation and posted it and it wasn't until like i got home and i started to tell him a little bit more and he's she made sure she told him because she had to prepare him that everybody about to see this shit Mm -hmm. And this is part of her plan to make him look bad, to give her the justification, and I'm the victim. Woe is me. Yeah, angry. So, I said, you're being like my mom. Like, you are telling me. To so now, you tell him your mom's a trigger, so you're going to throw that in his face. Again, to victimize yourself. How is it? How is he being like your mom for saying, I'm angry, I'm mad, but we can still work through this. You were looking for a reason to say, this ain't working. I have to go. Okay, let's be real. Let's call a spade a spade, bitch. Okay. Not talk to family. That's exactly what my mom did. Look, 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 her little expressions. This is exactly what my mom did. I couldn't talk to my family. 
Nobody wanted to talk to you, Gypsy. Me. And, you know, late, later in that week, I talked to my therapist about it. And I'm like, I said some things to Ryan in an argument. I feel bad for saying those things to him because I know... He no, you don't. It was part of your plan to get rid of him. He doesn't want to come across that way. I know he doesn't... And I highly doubt that she's pregnant. But if she is, it's going to be one hell of a karmic baby. want to be compared to my mom. So... He didn't compare you to your mom. You compared him to your mom. Get it right. How do... Keep your lies straight, baby. Keep your lies straight. I explained to him that when I feel triggered or when I feel controlled, that when I say you're being like... So, your mom had control, and you snapped, just like you're doing now. My mom, and I, how do I not make that an insult? Ugh, cringe. All right, I'm hanging up. <laughs>